SpaceX's Starship program is at the forefront of space exploration, with anticipation building for its fourth test flight, following the successful third integrated flight test. Preparations for Flight 4 have already begun at Starbase, meanwhile, SpaceX and the FAA are meticulously investigating the mishap from Flight 3. Also, tantalizing new revelations about Flight 4 and beyond have emerged from SpaceX and FAA officials. Join us as we uncover these latest developments. The latest test flight of Starship, while not entirely successful, achieved several significant milestones crucial to advancing the Starship program. A comprehensive breakdown of Flight 3 has been uploaded to this channel, therefore, I am not delving into the specifics again here. Please refer to the video in the description for a detailed analysis of Flight 3. Immediately after the launch, SpaceX teams began inspecting the launch pad for any infrastructure damages. They did a thorough inspection of the launch pad, launch mount, and launch tower. Scaffoldings were erected around the launch mount to scrutinize the launch mount ring, booster hold down clamps, and quick disconnect mechanism. There were no visible damages to the launch mount ring, other than a burn on one side, caused because the launch vehicle pitched slightly during liftoff to quickly move away from a launch tower. The booster quick disconnect mechanism appears to be in pretty good shape from the outside. However, upon removing the hood on Wednesday for inspection, teams discovered significant damage to the methane and oxygen carrying hoses inside. Subsequently, both hoses were removed, and plans are in place to replace them with new ones in the upcoming days. There were no major impairments evident to the launch mount plumbing, fuel lines, or electrical wiring. Although the launch pad area beneath the mount exhibited charring due to heat and fire, no significant harm was observed. The area outside the launch mount is also in great condition, with no big concrete damage visible. The water deluge system, installed after the first flight test last year, once again demonstrated resilience against the extreme acoustic and thermal conditions generated by the 33 booster engines during liftoff. The launch tower is also in a good state, with little to no damage. The new steel plates did a pretty good job of protecting the tower base from the powerful force of the booster engines. Teams were seen doing extensive inspections on the launch tower's rocket catching and stacking arms after the launch. The arm appears to be in good shape, with little to no damage. Similarly, the Starship quick disconnect arm on the tower emerged unscathed. The tank farm infrastructure depicted in images shared by RGV aerial photography showed no major impairments. Thanks to the latest fixes and upgrades, the vertical tanks that encountered damage during the first two launches survived the latest launch with little to no damage. Teams have already initiated cleanup efforts in the launch pad surroundings, clearing debris ejected during the Starship launch. In the coming days, any detected damages to the launch site will be promptly addressed through repairs or replacements to maintain the site's operational readiness for future missions. Since there were no major damages, we can expect the launch site to be ready for hosting Starship testing and launches by the first week of April. Once the launch site is ready, SpaceX will resume the pre-launch tests for Integrated Flight Test 4, which will feature Starship 29 and Super Heavy Booster 11. Starship 29 has already completed its cryogenic proof tests and a six-engine spin prime test. It is expected to return to the launch site in the coming days, where it will undergo static fire testing on suborbital pad B. Booster 11, having completed cryo testing, will also be rolled out to the launch site very shortly for static fire testing. Following the completion of static fire tests, the full-stack wet dress rehearsal will take place, marking the conclusion of pre-launch tests. Subsequently, SpaceX will proceed with integrated flight test number 4. For the launch to proceed, SpaceX needs to obtain a modified license from the Federal Aviation Administration. The issuance of the license hinges on the findings from the FAA's ongoing investigation into the Flight 3 mishap, led by SpaceX. Kelvin Coleman, FAA's Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, speaking at the Payload Space Capital event on March 18, said that he didn't see any major issues with the outcome of IFT-3, despite the flight of both the ship and the booster, terminated during the final stages of their descent. He expressed confidence that the investigation would not turn up any major issues that could significantly delay the next launch. Coleman also mentioned the agency's efforts to streamline the launch approval process, aiming for a system where licenses cover a portfolio of launches, rather than individual ones. As usual, once SpaceX completes its mishap investigation and submits a report to the FAA, it'll be up to the agency to issue a modified license for the next flight. Elon Musk recently expressed hope for Flight 4 to occur as early as April. And Gwynne Shotwell, president and chief operating officer of SpaceX, said the company is currently reviewing the data from Flight 3 and expects to get back to flight in about six weeks. In short, it appears that SpaceX is targeting late April or early May for the fourth integrated flight test.
Shotwell noted that Flight 4 will not carry any Starlink satellites, as SpaceX aims to focus on perfecting the vehicle reentry phase. Therefore, the Flight 4 mission profile is likely to resemble that of Flight 3, which will feature liftoff from Starbase, hot stage separation, followed by booster splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Ship 29 may perform an in-space propellant transfer demonstration, a payload bay door test, and the Raptor relight test which was skipped during IFT-3 due to high vehicle roll rates observed during the coast phase. Eventually, the ship will attempt a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Flight 4 will be followed by more integrated flight tests with new and exciting milestones. As per various reports, SpaceX aims to conduct between six to nine Starship launches this year. As per Gwyn Shotwell, the goal for Starship this year is to reach orbit, deploy satellites, recover both the first and second stages, and have a rapid turnaround on those stages. The increased launch frequency will provide SpaceX with ample opportunities to gather crucial data, enabling continuous improvements to the Starship design over time. As per current developments, the next four missions will feature Starships 29, 30, 31 and 32, paired with boosters 11, 12, 13 and 14. These ships and boosters are at various developmental stages at the production site. Ships from Starship 33 onwards will feature significant design upgrades and will be designated as Starship version 2 prototypes. So, if things go as planned, we might witness Starship V2 launches this year. Starship V2 prototypes will be followed by taller and more powerful V3 variants. Please check out the links in the description to learn about V2 and V3 ships in detail. The construction of the Starship static fire test stand and flame trench is progressing at the Massey's test site. A four-legged stand with a hole in the middle was spotted at Massey's lately. It is believed to be the test stand on which the ship will be placed for static fire testing. The exhaust from the six Raptor engines of the ship will be safely directed away by the flame trench beneath the test stand. The flame trench will feature a liquid-cooled flame deflector, designed with water channels to facilitate efficient cooling. The engine exhaust is cooled by this high-pressure water that will be sprayed into the flame deflector through thousands of nearly 4 mm diameter drilled holes. This water will create a protective layer over the deflector during testing, shielding it from the intense heat of the Raptor exhaust plume. This new test stand at Massey's will allow SpaceX to conduct longer static fire tests compared to those presently performed at the launch site. The data accumulated from such longer and more powerful tests will help SpaceX validate engine performance and system integration, conduct safety checks, and make necessary adjustments before the actual launch. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. China successfully launched a data relay satellite to support the country's future lunar missions. A long March 8 rocket lifted off from Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on March 20, carrying the Chuyichiao 2 relay satellite into space. It was the third flight of the Long March 8, a kerosene-fueled rocket aimed at replacing older Long March designs utilizing toxic hypergolic propellant. The rocket's upper stage placed the spacecraft into the planned Earth-Moon transfer orbit 24 minutes after liftoff. Once it arrives near the vicinity of the Moon, Chuyichiao 2 will enter a highly elliptical lunar orbit and unfold its 4.2-meter-wide parabolic antenna, enabling communications between Earth and the lunar far side. The specially tailored orbit supports China's Chang'e 6 lunar far side sample return mission, scheduled for launch in May. Chuyichiao 2 will have a line of sight to both Chang'e 6 and Earth for a large portion of its orbital period. The spacecraft, with a designed lifespan of at least eight years, will later adjust its orbital parameters to better support future lunar missions beyond 2030s. The spacecraft could also support other countries' lunar efforts. Chuyichiao 2 also carries three scientific payloads as part of the science objectives of the 2026 Chang'e 7 mission. Also aboard the launch were a pair of small, experimental satellites named Tiandu-1 and Tiandu-2. These satellites will operate in tandem in lunar orbit, conducting navigation and communications technology verification tests for the planned Chuyichiao satellite constellation around the moon. Chuyichiao 2 is a more capable follow-up to its predecessor, the Chuyichiao Relay satellite, launched in 2018. Chuyichiao facilitated the Chang'e 4 mission, the first ever lunar far side landing. The aging Chuyichiao satellite remains operational in a halo orbit around the Earth Moon's second Lagrange point, roughly 70,000 kilometers beyond the Moon. At the time of making this video, SpaceX is gearing up for its 30th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station, dubbed CRS 30. Liftoff of the CRS 30 Cargo Dragon mission aboard a Falcon 9 rocket is scheduled for March 21, 8:55 p.m. GMT, from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. 
This marks the first cargo launch from SLC-40 in four years, following the completion of the facility's new launch tower, which now features a crew access arm. These upgrades enable crewed launches from SLC-40, improving SpaceX's launch scheduling flexibility. CRS-30 will carry over 2,841 kilograms of science investigations, station equipment, and food for the inhabitants of the orbiting laboratory. Among the scientific investigations are a multi-resolution scanner to create 3D maps inside the space station, an experiment to explore the effects of microgravity on plant photosynthesis, tests of technologies to monitor sea ice from space, and the development of nanoparticle solar cells. Please check out the link in the description for the complete list of scientific investigations making the journey to the space station aboard the CRS-30 mission. Once in orbit, the Cargo Dragon will spend about two days catching up to the ISS and will eventually dock at the station's Harmony module on Saturday, March 23. Astronauts inside the space station will then transfer cargo from the spacecraft to the space station. Dragon will remain attached to the ISS for about a month before undocking and returning to Earth for a parachute-assisted ocean splashdown. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.